Good evening, everyone. I'm Leah Cooper with your JCN News for this Wednesday, July 17th. And as usual, it's great having you with us. Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis in the House of Assembly this morning sought to clarify a few things surrounding Liberty Latin America CEO Balan Nair. In fact, he says the video circulating on social media does not reflect what actually took place. Um, the CEO, Balan, who you're talking about, calls me, calls me on myself, and um, he apologized for um, if. The, um, the office of the Prime Minister was insulted. That was never his intent. Um, he apologized to the Bahamian people if that was the interpretation. That was never his intent. And I, I told him, this was a communication early this morning, and I told him that I think it would be fair and wise if he would send an official letter of apology both to the office of the Prime Minister and the people of the Bahamas. Now, the Prime Minister adds that Nair explained exactly what transpired and why things were done. However, Dr. Minnis says he's not at liberty to disclose that information to the public. During a recent Liberty Global Town Hall meeting in Jamaica, Nair said BTC is one of Liberty Latin America's lowest performing subsidiaries and linked the company's performance directly to its employees. Nair was captured on video saying that during a recent meeting with the Prime Minister, Dr. Minnis lobbied for more Bahamians to be employed. However, he jeered that Minnis was not trying to make eye contact with BTC CEO Gary Sinclair, a Jamaican national. Parliamentary Secretary in the Office of the Prime Minister labeled Mr. Nair's comments as unacceptable and extraordinarily inappropriate. Public Works Minister Desmond Bannister laying on the table this morning in the House of Assembly. The Bridge Authority's audited financial statements for the year ending December 31st, 2017. This the report's findings rather indicate that there's a deficiency in its bond sinking fund. The sinking fund was voluntarily established by the authority to reserve funds periodically to assist in retiring the bonds as they mature. The report read that on December 31st, 2017, the the authority had $29 million in bonds payable and $9,913,198 in, in the sinking fund. However, according to the management's calculations, the estimated amount that should have accumulated in the sinking fund at the balance sheet date was $16,589,465. That's a deficiency of $6,676,267. The report further explains that management is addressing the deficiency by allocating over $3 million per year, $3 million per year, that is, to the fund. And according to their calculations, it's expected to be eliminated by the end of the year. The tourism minister is once again expressing confidence that Disney Cruise Line's island development will exercise safe environmental practices in the construction of that $400 million cruise port and entertainment facility at Lighthouse Point, South Eleuthera. This time following New York-based environmental organization Waterkeeper Alliance partnership with local environmentalists to stop the construction with an online petition. According to Minister Diagler, he believes Disney will do anything to ensure that their image is maintained. So I feel very comfortable that Disney will take whatever steps that it has to to ensure that their product uh, does not in any way affect their their image. Um, and so, you know, I think they, they've uh, they've given an undertaking to to limit the density of the project. They've given it an undertaking to hand over to the Bahamian people, I think it's 190 acres uh, of the project. Um, they have been involved in many um, environmental uh, projects in the Bahamas, like reef restoration. So, you know, of all the companies on the planet, Disney probably has one of the best reputations, so I'm not, I'm not overly concerned. At last report, the Stop Disney Last Chance for Lighthouse Point online petition received just over 9,000 signatures. 
A Bahamian music legend has been gunned down at his home in Turks and Caicos and has been identified as Sly Roker. According to reports, he was shot in an early morning shooting in Blue Hills Providencialis, Turks and Caicos Island. The news came as a shock to the Bahamian music industry just a few weeks after Devon MD's night was also killed. The cameraman and videographer to drummer for the likes of Smokey 007 and singer of the mega hit Give It Up Baby, Sly Roker was an undeniable Bahamian superstar. Though he lived quietly in Turks and Caicos, some on the island knew his depth of talent and knew of the treasure setting up shop in Blue Hills Beach. Massage leader Obi Pinling expressed complete shock at the news, adding the horrible loss was already reverberating throughout Nassau. Sly grew up in Eight Mile Rock, Grand Bahama, and is a member of the Dean family in Blue Hills. Loving tributes as well as the morbid moment one of his daughters learned of Sly Roker's death are trending on social media. TCI police said in a statement, officers of the Serious Crime Unit are actively investigating an early morning shooting incident on on Wednesday, July 17, 2019, at 3.05 a.m., Central received reports that armed assailants entered the Bay Road Blue Hills home of the victim and opened fire. He was pronounced dead at 4.43 a.m. at the local hospital. A heated row breaking out on the steps of the House of Assembly this morning as police officers told members of the Democratic National Alliance that the rules prohibits them from having a press conference in front of the House of Assembly while it's in session. The heated back and forth began when DNA members pressed police on what law they were breaking. You can't be in the precincts of the yes, House of Assembly. How far, how far, how far do we, because this is a public. Yeah, we All right. Also, we can, we can move, so as long as we move the steps. Let me ask you another question. No, I'm asking you. You see the demonstration? But you can't have your press conference in the precinct. We can't stop people, that, people members from, in fact, you all can't obstruct we members from coming to the law that we're breaking. You can, can you, can you so let can us know which laws we move? So if we move, we can't be here. According to what? According to the law. Is that in the code? Yes, you can't obstruct people. Which code is that? You can't obstruct people. Can you kindly tell me that? That's all. However, before the argument, DNA leader Arinthia Komolafe explained that they were present at the parliament to continue the call for parliamentarians to move motion of no confidence in the prime minister. We are tired of the level of governance, poor governance that we have been subjected to under this free national movement government. And we are asking for the members that we sent to this honorable house that we are standing before right now to do the right thing and to put forward a motion of no confidence in Prime Minister Minnis and the FNM government. The DNA leader added that they're not concerned about whether this movement will gain traction because they're doing the work of the people. She noted that Bahamians across the archipelago are tired and something must be done. At the crux of the issues, everything that came to light surrounding the deal to move the general post office to Town Center Mall, which is partially owned by former cabinet minister Brent Simonet. This demonstration marks day two of the DNA's 10 days of activism. You're watching JCN News. Stay with us. This segment of the news was brought to you by Alive.